Hey there, so today we have another beer science video and we're going to be talking about oxidation or the staling of beer, something that you do not want to happen to your beer. A, I'm gonna go through the chemical process behind what it means, what is oxidation. Then I'm gonna go through the practical part of it. How does it actually help? What can I actually do about oxidation? And then the final part, we're gonna talk about small and large craft breweries and what we expect from them. So what is oxidation? It's the staling of beer. It's something we don't want. So if we have a packaged bottle of beer, we want as little oxygen in there as possible. And you'll see breweries fill it up all the way. And then they'll also just pump some CO2 in there. So we just keep out all the oxygen because that is one of the things that will hurt beer. So what is the chemical process between, uh, behind oxidation? Oxidation and reducing are when electrons are exchanged between uh, different, different chemical compounds. Oxygen is highly reactive to many of the com chemical compounds that we love in beer, the carbon compounds in there. So that's your polyphenols, your hop compounds, and your alcohols. So when we have oxygen exchanging electrons with those chemical compounds, we're gonna create a new animal called trans 2 nonanol And that is a generally described as a wet paper cardboard kind of characteristic. Um, if your palate isn't trained to it, try it out. Go to a retailer, go buy some uh, beer and then age it. Or ask a retailer if they have some old beer in the back that they pulled. Maybe they found out that they had an IPA that was six months a year old. They pulled it off the shelf and now it's in the back and ask, for, uh, ask them if they, <laughs> you can get it from them because you want to learn about oxidation. But learn it for yourself and try to find some older hoppy beer. For me, it tends to have a little bit more sweetness because the hops are not really zinging in there. And then it just has this general stale flavor to it. Again, it could be papery, but the, you can tell when a beer doesn't really pop like it should. So what does this mean for practical uses. So oxidation, obviously, if you go to get a growler fill and they fill it up right here, you tell them no. Send it right back. Tell them you want it filled up all the way because you want as little oxygen in the package as possible. As for purchasing beer, this mostly affects oxidation in a bad way, affects hoppy beers because they have so much hops in them, where the oxygen's affecting those hop compounds, and also your light lagers or your light beers. Uh, those beers don't really have anything to hide. If it's oxidated, you're gonna taste it. So I recommend that if you're gonna, especially hoppy beers, you're gonna buy something, check the uh, born on date, or the best buy date. And I try to keep it within three months of packaging. And one big tip is thank the retailers that put their beers in the fridge. Keeping beer cold will slow down the stilling process or the oxidation process. So keep your eye out for that cold beer and keep an eye out for the fresh beer because that's what you wanna buy. But if we go on to beers like a barley wine or a Belgian Creek or a Belgian Quad or an American Stout, those beers might actually have oxidative flavors that we want. They might get a little sweeter. The alcohol might get toned down. We might get some sherry notes as it ages. So it's not that oxidation is completely always a bad thing, but it will age beers in generally a beneficial way and then light beers in a bad way. So keep an eye out for your light beers and you want those beers fresh and cold. As for uh, larger and small craft breweries, I think someone asked this on the channel. So when I have a local brewery around the corner and they sell me a can of New England style IPA, they probably expect me to drink it within the month and they probably haven't done too much science within the packaging of the beer and don't have really expensive, you know, five, six figure, thousand dollar machines that can really find out how much oxygen in, is in here and how much how we can make the beer you know package better with as little oxygen as possible these small breweries don't really have that capability they're selling it right out of the brewery they want you to drink it fresh and that's what they expect but if we have these large craft breweries coming all the way from the west coast sending beer to me all the way on the east coast which can take almost a month and then it has to sit on a shelf that beer is probably going to be at least Best Buy for three months and then maybe even six months for a hoppy beer. So they're really expecting these beers to last that long because they've packaged it, they've done the science, and they've sent it out, and they expect that beer to be drinkable for probably at least three to six months. So when I have one of those beers all the way from the West Coast and it doesn't really quite pop for me, that A could be an issue with sending the beer all the way over. Maybe the retailer messed it up, but also it's just on the brewery to make sure the beer can last that long. Because if you're gonna send the beer and I'm gonna purchase it relatively fresh, it better taste relatively fresh because that's in my expectation for the large breweries. Whereas for a smaller brewery, 
I can't expect that beer to be great after three months. They didn't have the science. They didn't put in the work. They don't have the money to make sure that beer is going to last for three months. They expect you to buy the brewer, uh, beer right out of the brewery and drink it fresh, and that's it. So sort of that's my expectations for long, small and large breweries. Uh, but yeah, post in the comments below if you have any questions. I hope I answered some uh, questions for you about the oxidation of the staling of beer. So keep your beer cold, keep your beer fresh, and drink well. Until next time, guys. Cheers. Later.